Hello, this is Solly Townsend um, and we're here for our first Happy Hero interview and I'm really pleased to have Edwin as our inaugural <laughs> Happy Hero. Um, I'm really nervous so Edwin's gonna, gonna help and we're going to ask some questions about what it's like being a Happy Hero, your journey of a Happy Hero and what you're looking for in the future. Now if you are a passionate uh, reader of the Happy Hero you might already know a bit of Edwin's story. But Edwin, can you tell us about your journey to Give Me Tap? Sure, well first, thanks for having me on here, especially for the first one, that's always really cool. Um, so my name is Edwin and I'm the founder at Give Me Tap. And so for me, the whole journey started when I was actually 24 years old. And so for me, I was 24, I was at the University of Manchester studying for my PhD and I had a year left to finish that. And then about nine months from then, I was about to turn 25. And for me, and I think like, for a lot of guys anyway, being 25 is a really pivotal moment. You know, there's a certain milestone in a man's life where you need to have certain things achieved. Um, and for me, I started to read about financial wealth, health, but the most important thing for me at 25 was to have a six pack. Right? Because I felt like if I didn't have a six pack, it was such a time dependent thing that I'd never have it ever again. Because once you hit 25, everything kind of goes downhill. That was my thinking then anyway. And so with that in mind, I decided to head onto YouTube to think of how do you get a six pack in nine months, given that for 24 years I've never had one, right? So I went to the internet, found this program called P90X, and it said within 90 days, you'll be able to get ripped, get abs. And I thought, okay, let's see, I'm gonna follow this program to the T. And so if it doesn't work, it's not me, it's them. Um, and they told me to drink about five liters of water every single day. That's a lot of water. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Given, I think the recommendation is around two liters of water. Okay. And I am a relatively big guy. Um, so I was, <laughs> I was told to, to drink much more. Okay. Plus, I was told to eat almost around three and a half thousand calories every single day. Wow. Right? Okay. So I was starting my mornings with 10 eggs, so 10 yeah. egg whites and 200 grams of chicken, mozzarella, a whole, whole bunch of food. Yeah. Um, the, first, the first one I had I was, was almost sick yeah. because it was tough. Um, and through that journey, I kept on eating, I kept on drinking, and then I'd be going to and from campus, yeah. and then I'd try to go to cafes and restaurants and simply just ask to you know, refill my yeah. bottle with some tap water. Yeah. And I just met with so much resistance, and for me, I was a student, and I didn't have all the money to just buy a bottle of water, and I wanted to just yeah. keep hydrated, but they just said, no, 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 buy a bottle of water instead or buy something first and then we'll give you some water. Okay, so for a glass of water, you have to buy a product or a sandwich. Yeah. Similar to, you know, when you want to go to places and you want to use the restroom? Yeah. And they insist that you have to buy something first yeah. before you can use it. And I thought this didn't make sense for me. Um, so I didn't want to have to spend a lot of money to just stay hydrated. I thought it was incredibly wasteful to be buying plastic bottles anywhere where I knew I could get it for free. It was right behind the counter where they were sitting. Um, so with that kind of frustration, and the third point being that in England we have some of the best water in the world, but yet we're not just given easy access to it, and I didn't understand why. Yeah. And so with that in mind, and knowing that my dad grew up in Ghana without easy access to clean drinking water, I thought, okay, we have something clean and free in the UK with restricted access to it, yeah. and there's people around the world that aren't given them the same privileges, how can I help both sets of people? Yeah. And so I decided to just create a map of locations where you can find out that they will just give you access to tap water. Nice people who will refill your water bottle. <laughs> Happy, friendly people. Yeah. Who were just like, sure, come yeah. on in. Yeah. And so I decided to hit the pavement in the in University of Manchester and start recruiting cafes and restaurants. And it was interesting because I was still met with a lot of resistance. Yeah. Um, but slowly but surely, we started building up the water network. I had one beautiful woman called Lindsay Brown, who was the first cafe ever to sign up. And once I had her, I was yeah. able to go to other cafes and say, oh, we've got cafes on board, you know, pluralize it. And then other people wanted to join uh, into the movement. And that then helped us to keep growing the business and scaling it to, now we have a company, which is at Give Me Tap, where we sell stainless steel water bottles, and where for every bottle that is purchased, we're able to give another person in Africa five years of clean drinking water. Wow. And with your bottle, you're able to get free water refills from a network of cafes and restaurants. So you don't need to keep buying plastic bottled water and you can save money and reduce plastic waste in your cities. That's such an amazing story. And I've got my Give Me Tap bottle 
And how many places will now uh, refill your bottle if you've got Give Me Tap? So we have around 800 places that will wow. fill your water bottles. Uh, we have an app for the Android and the iPhone. The iPhone one we're still developing right now yeah. to fix some bugs in there, but we have both those apps and they'll allow you to go and see exactly which location you can go to to get water. Or if you don't have an app, you can just look in the window and there should be a window sticker in those kind of locations. So we need to keep an eye out for the Give Me Tap window sticker, yep. um, which is both a sign that someone will give you water and also that they're really lovely and they care about the world. It's the shape of a speech bubble, which I wish I had with me. <laughs> shape of a speech bubble saying Give Me Tap because yep. it's an affirmative word. Brilliant. So I love your story. Um, Edwin and I met a couple of years ago. We were both yeah. on a panel and when Edwin started, I was writing notes down, writing notes down. I'm so pleased that you made it into the book. Um, and in The Happy Hero, I talk about the fact that we do these things for the world and we can do them with one of two mindsets. We can make a difference in the world because we feel it's a duty or a necessity or maybe a sacrifice and morality. Or we can do something because it's a joy and a pleasure and exciting and fun. And you sound like a pretty fun guy. Right? <laughs> you sound like a pretty fun guy. So um, tell me a bit about how your life has changed. Has there been any uh, excitements or developments or or have ha what has Give Me Tap given to you? So the company has given an incredible amount. I mean, we're actually sitting here in New York today. I mean, I started the company. Yeah in my dorm room at university, the University of Manchester, and then I've moved from London, I then moved to San Francisco, and now I live in New York City. Yeah. So one, it's just allowed me to broaden my horizons. I've been able to travel to 37 different countries, get to interact with some amazing world leaders. Uh, we actually were the sponsors of TED and Global in Tanzania, so I was able to meet incredible individuals doing amazing things right across African continent. And it's those sorts of opportunities that the business has provided me just from being, I guess, the founder of it, I'm able to go and meet incredible people that are changing my life every day. Um, and let's talk a bit about plastics, because a lot of people um, have got this really quite deep upset about plastics right now. You've got the incredible David Attenborough show, we've all seen the turtle caught in plastic, um, and there's a lot of guilt about plastic right now. Um, what you're doing is something really positive that helps reduce plastics, and when you feel overwhelmed with the negative, with the negative stories, with what are we going to do, how do you keep going in what you do, faced with like these massive challenges of plastic and or even these massive challenges of people who don't have access to water what keeps you going the thing that keeps me going is actually just knowing that we help so every time we sell a bottle I know that means someone else is getting water and then we get to see videos and images of that I get to go to the communities in Ghana to actually then meet interact and that on its own fills me up with just joy knowing that we're doing something that matters so yeah. when I wake up in the morning I'm like we're doing something that matters and fundamentally when I created the company I actually said to myself I don't want to create a guilt-based company. It's so easy, it's so, so easy to say like, <clears throat> you're doing wrong, you're doing bad, you should change. I grew up as a black male, I was a black African in the UK, seeing adverts of Africa with like babies and flies and destitute. It was a place of ruin. Yeah. And But the Africa I had known when I'd gone back with my family wasn't that representation. So I said to myself, look, I'm going to show the vibrancy, the joy, the magic that is there and then show people what the impact they can do through providing more joy as opposed to showing you the devastation that's created and therefore you should do something about it and help and donate. And that's why I created the company as I have, as a social enterprise with the purpose of saying, I'm going to inspire everyone to see the magic that is there and also that you can do so much great things through your simple everyday purchases, as opposed to you're a horrible person, you have privilege, and therefore you should help. And that's why I created the company the way I have, to be a joyous, joyful, happy company. Oh, I'm running up a bit. <laughs> it's so amazing, it's so amazing. Um, it's just such an incredible story. Um, actually, incredible stories can sometimes be quite difficult because people who are watching might go, oh, do, that's so incredible what you've managed to achieve, the impact that you're yeah. making um, might make people feel a bit intimidated. And 
do we have to do do we have to set up businesses do we have to create m massive social change what would you say to someone who feels like I'm a bit small and I'm not sure I can quite do this. Um, can I have any impact? What would you say to someone who's feeling that maybe they 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 can't make any difference at all? The thing is, with even something like the company that we have, there's a lot of social businesses out there in existence. So if you feel you don't want to take on the task of like creating your own enterprise, sometimes it's just being mindful of how you spend your pound or your dollar. Because if you're mindful with that, then you can also make an impact just through someone else's organization or initiative. So where you buy your toothpaste, where you buy your skin cream products, where you buy your water bottles, where you buy your food, these kind of choices are an everyday person's choice. Yeah. And if you can just become mindful of that, you don't have to take on, let's say, the burden, if, if you want to call it that. I don't, see, I don't even see it like that. But yeah. if you feel there's pressure to feel like I have to start something while changing, you don't even have to do that. You can literally just, buy a chocolate bar that's fair trade or yeah. do something different and through that just one action you've already made an impact ah that is so inspiring and absolutely what i believe with the happy hero as well is that every single one of us can make a difference every single day by what we do and sitting here drinking tap water mm -hmm. what have you done with give me tap so tell me a little bit about what's next for give me tap what's your vision where do you want to go with it so for me i always wanted to start it that the whole vision was that around every corner you'd be able to get access to water and so we're building up the water network so that you can be no more than four minutes walk so every 400 meters you should be able to get to another place where you'll be able to get a refill yeah. and that's the aim because if it's that convenient the necessity to buy a bottle of water diminishes because you're like well yeah. it's just as convenient to get tap water and then for me to be able to then provide more and more people in africa with access to clean water and then beyond so right now there's still 300 million people that go without clean drinking water in Africa. There's still 600 million plus across the whole world. Yeah. So my intent is just to keep growing. And while that number is massive, right, 600 million is a massive number, it's just doing it bit by bit by bit. You know, yeah. I wake up, I, I, I tell people what we're doing, I get partners and people who want to support and we're able to help more people and move the needle forward. And I just take it bit by bit. So, I think I already know the answer to this question. Yeah. Uh, is Edwin an optimist or a pessimist? I am an optimist. Yay! Clearly. Optimist! I mean, like, Excellent! <laughs> I think you have to almost be optimistic to even start ventures because yeah. you have to kind of believe that the thing that maybe no one else is doing and seeing that it can be realised. And I'm optimistic in my abilities, I'm optimistic in people. I think human beings are amazing but yeah i think sometimes we're fed different types of information and so i try and maintain my optimism by watching what i even allow into my life uh, so that i can maintain that brilliant i've got one final question and it is the most important question of all and it's the question that everyone watching has been thinking <laughs> let's see it's the <laughs> did you get a six pack so so i am going to say that drinking water works i got the six pack within 60 days it was absolutely incredible. Um, I was able to lose almost two stones. Okay. I was ripped. I felt great. And then, you know, when you turn 25, everything goes downhill. So, <laughs> oh, come so, on, come so, on. so, so I went downhill and like I literally turned 25, started a company, and then. It doesn't look downhill. Um, <laughs> Just saying. I, I'm still in the gym. I asked to work out. The abs, you know, I have competitions yearly and I need to start really dedicating to it. But sometimes I travel and then. I eat differently, but this year. This year. This year. This year. I, I I'll I'll go in a bet with you. This time next year, we'll be here and we can we can check we can compare. Yeah, yeah. This time next year. This we'll time be... next year. This time next year. This time next year. <laughs> this year. This time next year. We we'll see. Edward, thank you so very much. Let me give you a copy of The Happy Hero. You are my thank first so Happy much. Hero. I'm so, so grateful that you came on the show. Um, you truly deserve the term Happy Hero. And, thank you And so thank much. you for sharing with everyone watching. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. See ya.